Hello everyone, welcome back again to my channel. Today we're going to discuss your lesson in your module for week 1, quarter 1. But before that, let us enumerate first the objectives for this week. Letter A, generate and describe patterns. Letter B, identify the next few terms of a sequence. Letter C, differentiate finite from infinite sequence. Letter D, list the next few terms of a sequence given the general term. Letter E, find the general or n term of a sequence. And letter F, illustrate an arithmetic sequence. Let's start with lesson 1, the definition of sequence. What do we mean by sequence? Sequence or progression is a set of numbers written in specific order. Here are some examples of sequence. Letter A, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Letter B, 12, 9, 6, 3, 0, and so on. Letter C, 9 tenths, 8 tenths, 7 tenths, 6 tenths. Letter D, 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth, 1 over 16, 1 over 32, and so on. The sequence may be written in descending or increasing order. Now, we have separated the sequence into two groups. The first group is the so-called finite sequence. Finite sequence are sequence that contains a finite number of terms. Example, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. In this sequence, we can determine the first and the last term of the given sequence. That is 12 and 20, meaning to say these are countable. Next, the other group is the so-called infinite sequence. This contains an infinite number of terms. Say, for example, 19, 22, 25, 28, 31, and so on. In this sequence, the last term is unknown. This means we cannot determine how many terms or how many numbers we have in this sequence. And it is represented by these three dots, and we refer this as ellipsis, meaning to say there are still a lot of numbers after the number 31. Now let's proceed to lesson 2, finding the terms of a sequence. Let us define first the word term. Term is any number in the sequence. Example, given the sequence 3, 9, 15, 21, 27, 3 is a term, 9 is a term, 15 is a term, 21 or 27 are terms in the sequence. Now, 3 here is the first term of the given sequence, 9 is the second term, 15 the third, 21 the fourth term, 27 the fifth term. In symbol, we can write the first term as a sub 1, second term a sub 2, third term a sub 3, fourth term a sub 4, fifth term a sub 5. Now, if we continue the sequence, we will be having now our n term. So, say for example, if we assign a certain number, just like 3, 9, 15, 21, 27 as n, so therefore, we have here our n term as a sub n. But take note that n here refers to the term position, just like first term, fourth term, fifth term, sixth term, tenth term, and so on. Now let us have the first problem. Find the next three terms of the sequence 5, 9, 13, 17, 21. Now, observe our first term and second term. What do you think? Are we going to add or subtract or multiply or divide to the first number or the first term, which is 5, in order that we can obtain 9, which is the second term? That is, we add 4. So, let's check. 5 plus 4, is that equal to 9? Yes. Now, if we're going to do the same, we add 4 to 9, is that equal to 13? Let's check. 9 plus 4 is equal to 13. Yes. Let's have again 13 to 17. If we have 4 to 13, is that equal to 17? Yes. How about 17 plus 4? Is that equal to 21? Yes. So therefore, we can do that to the next terms. And that is 21 plus 4 is equal to 25. 
25 plus 4, that's 29, and 29 plus 4 is 33. So what's the rule? That is adding 4 to the preceding term. Another example, find the next three terms of the sequence 2, negative 4, 8, negative 16, 32, and so on. Now, what do you think? Are we going to add or subtract or multiply or divide to the first number so that we can be able to obtain negative 4 as the second number? That is, multiplying 2 by negative 2. So 2 times negative 2, that's negative 4, which is our second term. Multiplying again negative 4 by negative 2, that is equal to the third term, which is 8. Negative 4 times negative 2, that's positive 8. Then for the third and fourth term, multiplying 8 by negative 2, 8 times negative 2, is that equal to negative 16? Yes. Negative 16 times negative 2, is that equal to 32? Yes. So therefore, 32 times negative 2, that's equal to negative 64. Negative 64 times negative 2, that's positive 128. 128 times negative 2, that's negative 256. So the rule is multiplying negative 2. Now let's have the third problem. Find the first three terms of the sequence whose general term is given by a sub n is equal to 4n minus 1. So we're given only a rule which is a sub n is equal to 4n plus 2 and we are asked to find the first three terms. So therefore, we will be assigning values for n so that we can be able to obtain the first three terms. And therefore, we will start with n is equal to 1. Replacing the value of n to our general term, that will become a sub 1, which will be our first term. And that will be equal to 4 times the value of n, and that is equal to 1, plus 2, is equal to 4 plus 2 is equal to 6. So we have now our first term. Then to find the second term, we will have n is equal to 2, and that will be equal to a sub 2, which is our second term, equals 4 times the value of n, which is equal to 2, plus 2, is equal to 8 plus 2, is equal to 10, and that is our a sub 2, or second term. Then to find the third term, we will be having n is equal to 3. That will become now a sub 3, which is the third term, is equal to 4 times the value of n, because that's 4n. So that will be 4 times 3 plus 2 is equal to 12 plus 2 is equal to 14. So therefore, our first three terms are 6, 10, 14. Now let's proceed to lesson number 3, finding the n term of a sequence. Given 0, 4, 8, 12, 16, and so on, the number 0 here is our a sub 1, 4 is a sub 2, 8 is a sub 3, 12 is a sub 4, 16 is our a sub 5. So what do you think will be our n term in this given sequence? There are so many ways in order that we can find the general term for this given sequence, and one method is the so-called trial and error method. Now let's try a sub n is equal to 4n minus 4. If we substitute n is equal to 1 to our general rule, which is a sub n is equal to 4n minus 4, the result should be 0, which is our first term of the given sequence. So let's check. If n is equal to 1, that will become a sub 1 is equal to 4 times 1 minus 4. And 4 times 1 is 4 minus 4, that is equal to 0. And that is the same with our first number in the given sequence. If n is equal to 2, the result should be 4. If we substitute that to our general rule, which is a sub n is equal to 4n minus 4. Let's check. a sub n, that will become now a sub 2, and that is should be 4 times 2 minus 4. 4 times 2 is 8 minus 4, so therefore, that is equal to 4. That is still equal to our second number or second term in our given sequence. Now, what if n is equal to 5? The result should be 16. Let's check. 
a sub n is equal to 4 and minus 4, replacing the value of n to our rule, that will become a sub 5 is equal to 4 times 5 minus 4. And 4 times 5 is equal to 20 minus 4, that is equal to 16. So therefore, our n term is a sub n is equal to 4n minus 4. But how about if we will not apply the trial and error method? How are we going to obtain a sub n is equal to 4n minus 4? This time, we will be using this formula, a sub n is equal to dn plus a sub 0. But how are we going to find the value of d at the same time the value of a sub 0? Let's go back with our given sequence, 0, 4, 8, 12, 16. If we're going to add a certain number to the first number, which is 0, to obtain the second number, which is 4, we will be using a number 4 because 0 plus 4 will arrive at 4. If we're going to use that number to the second number again, 4 plus 4, we will be arriving on 8 as the third number. So this is their common difference. And that is the value of D on our given formula. So that will become now A sub N is equal to 4N. Now how about A sub 0? If we have here 0 as our first term, or a sub 1, and 4 is equal to a sub 2, then therefore the number before 0 is our a sub 0. And what will be the value of it? If we added 0 plus 4 to obtain the second number, let's reverse the process. If we add, then going to the left, we will subtract. What is 0 minus 4? And that is negative 4. So that is our value of a sub 0. So we have now our general term a sub n is equal to 4n minus 4. Let's proceed to lesson number 4, the arithmetic sequence. What does it mean? This is a sequence where every term after the first term is obtained by adding a constant. And this constant is called the common difference. How are we going to find the common difference? It can be calculated by subtracting any two consecutive term in the arithmetic sequence. So let's have this example, 6, 11, 16, 21, 26 as our given sequence. If we subtract 11 minus 6 or the second term minus the first term, the result is 5. If we subtract 16 minus 11 or the third term minus the second term, the result is also 5. Same with if we subtract 21 minus 16 and 26 minus 25, the result is also 5. This is called the common difference. Let's have this problem. Find the common difference of the sequence 8, 17, 26, 35, 44. To find the common difference, let us subtract a sub 2 and a sub 1. That is equal to 17 minus 8 and that is equal to 9. Let us have the third term minus the second term or a sub 3 minus a sub 2. That is equal to 26 minus 17 and the result is equal to 9. If we subtract the fourth term minus the third term, which are 35 and 26, still the result is 9. So the common difference of the given sequence is 9. Let's proceed to lesson number 5, finding the terms of an arithmetic sequence. Let's have this problem. Find the next three terms of the sequence 3, 8, 13, 18, 23. To be able to find the next three terms, the first step is you're going to find first their common difference. So how? Let's subtract the second term minus the first term, and that is equal to 8 minus 3, and the result is 5. Subtracting the third minus the second term, or 13 minus 8, the result is also 5. Subtracting the fourth minus the third, that is equal to 18 minus 13 is equal to 5. So we have the common difference of 5. So we will be using this value of D which is equal to 5 or their common difference to obtain the next term. 
If we add 5 to 3, which is our first term, we will be obtaining the second term. That is 8. So 3 plus 5, that's 8. 8 plus 5, that's 13. 13 plus 5 is 18. 18 plus 5 is 23. Therefore, the next term is 23 plus 5 is 28. 28 plus 5, that's 33. And 33 plus 5 is 38. So the next three terms are 28, 33, 38. Thank you for watching and learning with me. See you on my next videos.